Hey guys, it's Maddie from Let's Eat Plants and today we're gonna make a vegan deli style turkey loaf. So today's recipe is from 86eats.com. I have recently found this website and there are a lot of seitan vegan mock meats on there. I actually really like seitan. I used to make it quite often. I haven't made it in a while because I was out of vital wheat gluten, which is the key ingredient in seitan. But I have to say of all the seitan I have made before, none of mine have looked like this. I mean, this looks like a legit deli style turkey. So that's what we're making today. I'm very excited. It's actually kind of a two day recipe because according to the recipe, it's best to bake the loaf and then let it cool and refrigerate it overnight. So I will be baking it today and taste testing tomorrow. And with that, let's get started. First thing you're going to need is a firm tofu. I did see in the recipe that it does make a difference on what kind of tofu you use. So there are many different forms of tofu. There's like soft, silken, firm, medium firm, and even of those varieties, there are different variations. For example, I've seen firm tofu that comes in this vacuum sealing, but I've also seen firm tofu that comes in water. I think I have some, let me show you. Aha. As you can see, this is also firm tofu, but it comes in water. And according to the recipe, we don't want that. We want the one that is vacuum sealed. So apparently that makes a difference in this recipe. I guess it has to do with the water content. If you can only find this one, I think the recipe does give instructions on how to kind of adjust the recipe and use a little bit less water. But luckily I was able to find this firm tofu that is vacuum sealed. So we're going to try this first and hopefully this will give our turkey loaf the right texture. This is our vital wheat gluten. So fresh from the store, I haven't even put it in a jar yet. This is what makes seitan, seitan. It is essential to the recipe, and unfortunately, it is not gluten-free. So this is not an ideal recipe for people who are gluten-free. There is not a substitute for it. So if you haven't worked with vital wheat gluten before, it is just the gluten part of flour. So it does look like flour, and it is essentially flour, but it has little to no starch. It is like 100% gluten. It's also really high in protein. Just 100 grams of this flour has about 75 grams of protein. I think it's really cool. I definitely recommend you guys trying it out. If you haven't ever made seitan before, it's worth trying. So tofu and vital wheat gluten are basically the base of this recipe, and pretty much everything else is just kind of the seasoning or flavor component of the recipe. I think that's right. I think we're just supposed to process the tofu until it's like tofu crumbles, and then we add the other ingredients and then it will start to form like a dough type consistency. I just opened my onion powder to realize I'm completely out of onion powder. Oh no, we need two teaspoons of onion powder. I'm just gonna substitute garlic powder. The recipe already calls for garlic powder, but I'm just gonna sub a little bit extra to make up for the lack of onion powder and say lovey. I also just realized I'm completely out of rosemary. Like note to self, check your pantry before you start a recipe. What are you gonna do? Okay, now according to the recipe, we want to add as little water as possible. So we're just going to start with the minimum required water, which is a half a cup, and see if this forms a dough. And if not, then we can always add a little bit more, but we will start with just half cup. Ooh. 
Okay, this is definitely starting to look like a seitan dough. You can see like some clumps of dough forming here. And so not only are you incorporating the ingredients when you food process it, but you're also starting to knead it a little bit. So personally, the only thing I've ever had trouble with in regards to seitan is whether to knead it a lot or not knead it at all. Some recipes will tell you to knead it for like five or 10 minutes. Other recipes will say, whatever you do, don't knead it. So kneading it definitely affects the final texture of the final product. And this recipe only said to knead it in the food processor for a couple minutes. So I can see that it's a little bit spongy. I'm hoping that the final texture isn't too spongy. I don't like a spongy seitan. <laughs> but I do see that the gluten strands are starting to develop, so I guess that's a good thing. The recipe doesn't really say what to look for. I'm just following it based on kneading time, and it said to do it for a couple minutes, so here we are. The recipe says to bake the seitan in aluminum foil. I personally like to wrap my seitan in parchment first and then in aluminum foil just to keep like a layer of protection against the aluminum foil. I don't know if that's crazy, but that's how I usually make it, so that's what I'm going to do. Now we're supposed to use some kind of a hickory seasoning to coat the outside of the loaf. I kid you not, I had no idea what hickory seasoning was. Maybe I've just never cooked a lot of meat before. I don't really know. But I do remember in the past before I was vegan, there was like a pepper coated turkey breast that I really liked. So I'm gonna try using pepper on the outside mixed with some paprika. I don't know why, but that combination sounded pretty good. So we're gonna try this out. So we're gonna bake this in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes and then take off the foil and bake it uncovered for another 30 to 40 minutes. Let's do it. It is the next morning, we have our seitan loaf right here, and I am really excited about this. Like I said, I love seitan and I have been craving this and like, it took every single force in my body not to cut into this yesterday. I was like, maybe I'll just sneak a little bite. No one will know, but no, I resisted. I put it in the fridge. It's been in the fridge for almost 24 hours and we're gonna taste test it together right now. I'm like so proud right now. This looks so good. It does kind of smell like turkey. I mean, it also has that familiar seitan smell. If you've had seitan before, you probably know what I'm talking about, but there is kind of like a, a turkey scent to it. I don't know if that's psychological because I know that it's supposed to smell like that, so I feel like it smells like that, or if it really does smell like that. Let's try this, I'm so excited. Mmm. This is one of the better seitan loaves that I've made, for sure. That outside coating that I wasn't sure about worked out really nicely. I can't wait to make this into a sandwich because honestly, I think you might be able to fool some people into thinking that this is real turkey. There is the slightest, slightest hint of seitan. I think it's like the kind of wheat flavor that seitan has, but that's it. Like really, this is pretty much perfect. My next question is whether or not it is cheaper than buying store-bought. First of all, you don't even buy this much when you buy it at the store. You buy those like tiny little slice amounts. So I'm gonna break it down by price per gram and just compare it to a similar item that you would find at the store. So not only does this taste really, really good, but it is less expensive than what you would buy at the store. 
I mean, I'm pretty blown away. If you guys are interested in trying this out for yourself, I will link the original website with the recipe down below. If you're interested in more vegan recipes, please check out the playlist right here after this video. And also don't forget to subscribe. I'm making new videos every week, bringing you vegan recipes and whole food plant-based recipes for you to make at home. And with that, let's eat plants and I will see you guys next time.